In this video, we are going to look at the periodic table, putting emphasis on the first 20 elements. When you look at the periodic table, the word periodic means a certain pattern is repeating itself, or a property is reoccurring after some given sequence. So the periodic table generally looks like this. However, we shall summarize it in two, three points. One, in the periodic table we have horizontal rows that we call periods and vertical columns that we call groups. We shall see that the elements in a periodic table will always be arranged in order of their increasing atomic numbers and we shall always represent them by their chemical symbols. And we shall see that we basically have metals and nanometals, although metalloids may also be included. When you look at our periodic table, this is how it looks like. But I have said we shall look at only the first 20 for reasons unknown. So we shall try to shorten it into this format where we shall deal with only the first 20, ignoring period 5, length nights, and so on. So when we look at the periodic table, we shall start with hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, and calcium. Those are the first 20 elements. When you are to look at the top left corner of each of these square boxes, you realize that we have what I will call the atomic numbers. We have, for example, hydrogen has atomic number 1, helium 2, lithium 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on, up to 20. That's why we say that the periodic tables actually are arranged in order of increasing atomic numbers. Because you will see that after beryllium, you go to boron. After boron, you go to carbon, which is atomic number 6, and so on. So these elements are always arranged in order of the number of protons each atom has. So... We have the transition elements between group 2 and group 3 as we shall see in future videos and we shall see what transition elements are all about. However, we are going to focus on only the first 20 elements. So our predictable has what we call groups. When you look at groups, we shall realize that we have only 8 groups, although sometimes they may name them differently. We have group 1, group 2, group 3, up to group 8. Usually we prefer using the Roman numerals. So groups are basically these vertical columns. For example, this is group 1. It will include hydrogen, lithium, sodium, and potassium. If you look at group 4, we shall have our nitrogen and sorry, group 5, we shall have our nitrogen and phosphorus. So basically groups will be the vertical columns that we shall be having as we shall see later on. We also have what we call the periods. Now, periods are the horizontal rows that we shall see in this table. And we shall basically be having, for example, period 2. Period 2 will be this horizontal row. We shall have lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. This will be in period 2. Period 1 shall have only 2, hydrogen and helium. You may sometimes find hydrogen not being in group 1 but there are some reasons behind that but in this case let's put it in group one so we basically have four periods considering only our first 20 elements in the periodic table some of the groups are given special names that's why i've called them special groups when you look at group one we have the alkali metals that's another name for group one elements these metals are highly reactive to the extent that they are stored under oil or in oil for example sodium when you look at group 2 elements, these are known as the alkaline earth metals. They also dissolve in water to form alkali solutions. However, they are so common on, on earth to the extent that when they dissolve in water, we shall form our hard water. And these include magnesium and calcium. So these group 2 elements are also known as the alkaline earth metals. We also have group 7 elements, fluorine, chlorine and others, known as halogens because they can easily form salts when they react with metals. These ones are also highly reactive and they are diatomic. 
in nature. When you look at group 8 elements, these are basically monatomic, meaning they exist as single atoms and they are relatively inert. They don't tend to react. We have helium, neon, and argon. Now, when you look at the periodic table, if we move down a given group, down any group, we tend to see an increase in atomic size, also known as atomic radius. Taking a look at group 1, where we have our hydrogen, helium, and lithium. When we see that atomic size increases down the group, it means that the atom of lithium will be larger in size compared to that of hydrogen. And among these four, that means potassium will have the largest atomic size. Because as we move down the group, we tend to increase the number of energy levels, as we shall see. Let's look at atomic size down the group with group 1 as our reference group. Starting with period 1, we have the hydrogen atom or element. It has one energy level and one electron. That's why its electron configuration will be 1. But when we move further down group 1 to period 2, we shall have a new element of lithium that has two energy levels. The first one having two electrons and the second one having one electron, giving it an electronic configuration of two to one. As you can see, we are having an increase in atomic size because we have a new energy level that has a larger radius compared to the one for hydrogen. When you go to period three, we shall realize that we have the first energy level, then the second energy level, and then the third energy level. That's where we tend to have an increase in atomic size, stroke, radius. So here we shall have our sodium with three energy levels and one electron in the outermost energy level. Lastly, period four shall have our potassium, which has four energy levels. And the order of reactivity will tend to increase down the group one, especially down groups of metals shall have an increase in reactivity. So down the group, atomic radius increases. What about across any period, specifically from left to right? In this case, the atomic size decreases. When you look at the atoms of lithium, beryllium, boron, in this case, that will mean that an atom of boron will be smaller in size compared to that of beryllium. And that of neon, that means in period two, it will always be having the smallest atomic size. But why is this so? When you move from left to right, that is to say from carbon to nitrogen, from nitrogen to oxygen, we tend to have an overall increase in the effective nuclear charge. As such, the outermost electrons tend to be attracted much more by the nuclear attraction. In this case, the atomic radius tends to decrease. So across any period, be it period 1, period 2, period 3, the atomic radius will always decrease. That means atoms to the right will always have smaller atomic sizes compared to atoms to the left of our periodic table. So our periodic table is basically divided into two regions, the left hand side and the right hand side, with the left hand side basically containing the metals. However, these metals we shall mainly stop on group 3, while from group 4 to group 8 we shall be having our non-metals. So aluminium will be a metal, while chlorine will be a non-metal. And this will be also evident in the way these elements behave, whether to conduct electricity or not. However, when we are to summarize the groups, the groups aid us in identifying the number of electrons an element or atom has in its outermost energy level. For example, look at this group 2. Group 2 means that all elements in this group will be having two electrons in the outermost energy level. For example, beryllium has atomic number 4 and its electron configuration will be 2 to 2. It has two electrons. Magnesium has atomic number 12. Electronic configuration will be 2 to 8 to 2. It also has two electrons. Then we can do one more check. For example, nitrogen is in group 5, atomic number 7. So it will have electronic configuration 2 
to 5. Still, this is 5. 5 electrons, group 5. So the groups will tell us how many electrons a given atom has in its outermost energy level. However, when you go to periods, periods will instead tell us the number of energy levels an atom has. For example, hydrogen is in period 1. That means it will have only one energy level. That will be the hydrogen. While lithium, which is in period 2, will have two energy levels, the innermost and the outermost that contains the one electron with the other two electrons inside. So period 2, two energy levels, 1, 2. Period 4, for example, calcium will have 4. It will have the first one, the second one, the third one, and then the fourth one, as we had seen in our previous slides. So our calcium will have its last two electrons in the fourth energy level. So basically periods will tell us how many energy levels a given atom has. So that's all about the periodic table. However, we have a few things to note. Currently we have roughly 118 chemical elements known at this time. As technology advances, we can always have more elements coming in as new ones may be discovered or created. So, one last question, what are, what are metalloids? We had seen metals and non-metals, but we have another term known as metalloids. So feel free to share with us what you think metalloids could be. At least there is a word, metal. So, thank you for watching. Stay safe.